So alright guys, in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to set up MechWarrior 4 on Linux using nothing more than Lutris. Now before we get started with the actual tutorial, I want to say this. I'm using Lutris just because there's a well already written up guide for how to set up MechWarrior 4 on Lutris already made for the Steam Deck. This guide just happens to work on other Linux distros as well, so I thought it was worth covering and making a video about since I've seen no one make a video for this, as well as no one showing off any gameplay of MechWarrior 4 on the Steam Deck. And in today's video, we're going to do both. So with that said, what do we need to get started? Well, first thing we're going to need is Lutris. So you can get that through your package manager store or downloading it through the terminal. I'm going to be doing it through the terminal, that way I can have both commands up for Debian based systems as well as Arch systems on screen. On my particular PC, since I'm running Arch, I just got to use pacman s lutris. And that will install the program for me as soon as I give it my password and accept everything. Now for you, it may take a minute or two longer to install than it did for me. I already had Lutris on this system and I just uninstalled it, reinstalled it, so reinstalling it went by quicker for me this time around. Another thing that will happen because of this is Lutris is going to skip something, a certain step here in my uh, video, but I'm going to cover it here in a minute. But first things first, let's open up Lutris now that it's downloaded. You can easily do that just by navigating to your games menu or typing Lutris in the terminal. Now this specific step right here is going to be a little bit different for you because on the left hand side you should see a bunch of progress bars downloading everything Lutris needs to well function. This will include Wine and various other .dlls and files that it requires. So I recommend you to let it finish downloading all the assets before continuing on with adding your game. Now since mine's already added all the assets that this requires to function, I'm just going to go up here to the plus on Lutris and click it. This will ask me where my game is located. I'm going to be using an already set up and extracted installation. What I mean here is unlike the guide where they use the MechWarrior 4 installer, I already had this installed at some point so I just got to point the application to my executable. But for you, on this step, all you'd have to do is point Lutris to the installer executable and just do that instead of the actual game executable. Just know that after you got the game installed through Lutris, you'll have to change the EXE from the installer to the main game's executable pretty much. It sounds complicated, but as I show you this, I'm sure you'll understand. So I'm just going to click on add locally installed game, give it a name, I'm just going to call it MechWarrior4. And I want to make sure I select Wine as my runner. Now since I have Wine as a standalone application already on my Linux distro, I'm going to run into a small issue later on that isn't addressed in the guide itself, because on the Steam Deck and some other hardware you may not have Wine already on your system. However, I'm going to address this issue, that way in case you run into it, you can easily fix it. But we're not quite there yet, when the issue arises I'll point it out again. Anyway, once you selected Wine as your runner, go over to Game Options, and we need to hit the three dots here and navigate to our executable. In my case, the executable is located in the MechWarrior 4 folder under a folder called Base. The executable that you should be looking for is going to be called MechWarrior 4 mercs.exe. So just click that and hit OK. After that we need to add some arguments because just like the guide tells you, if you leave the intro videos play, they'll play something for a brief minute but then the installation or the menu will crash. You'll have to disable the intro videos and hopefully in a part 2 for this, I've figured out how to recreate something somebody else did where they converted the video files to another format. But in my case I'm just going to turn the videos off altogether just for this tutorial. So to do that, just do a slash goes no video, I believe. Just did a double check there, yep, just goes no video. That's all you should need for arguments for this game. Other than that, it's not really required to select the working directory, but I'm going to go and select mine anyway. That's just the directory where the executable is located. Now after that, you're going to need to define your Wine Prefix folder. This can be anywhere on your system. Normally I would ask you not to put your 
wine prefix in with your game, but in this particular case, if you were to do so, you could actually copy your game onto another system and just reselect the folder here and you won't have to download anything all over again. So I recommend actually putting the wine prefix in with your game in this particular case. So all I'm going to do is navigate into my games folder, make a new folder, call it mw4 prefix. It could be pretty much called anything, but I'm just doing that because it's easy to remember. And now that I've done that, all I got to do is click on OK. Now we're just about done, believe it or not. After this, all we got to do is go over to our runner section and pretty much hit enable DG Voodoo 2 and turn off everything under F sync. And that should actually be it. Now just know the LAN mode in this game will not work. We're going to try to fix that in a part 2 as well as the intro videos. But for now we're just going to follow the guide pretty much bit for bit. So all that's left now is to hit save. And we are done. Just click the executable here. Hit play and a new window should pop up. Don't worry, this is Wine populating that prefix folder we made earlier. It will copy all the DLLs and create all the folders necessary for this game to well launch. Now one thing to note, unlike in the guide that describes this process, you won't get asked for a Wine Mono installation, I believe, on the Steam Deck from what I remember. However, on my particular system, it's going to ask me if, I'd, if I would like .mono installed. I can just tell it no, I can hit cancel or X. We do not need wine.mono for this to function. As you saw, just hit cancel on that and the installation here should just about be done. So alright, now that the wine prefix has been generated, you can see MechWarrior 4 is trying to start up. But the automatic in-game uh, configuration utility should come up instead. Once this window pops up, all you have to do is click on Advanced. There's a couple things we want to change in here. Specifically on my system, like I was telling you earlier, I already had Wine on here. So having Lutris causes kind of a conflict issue. I have to change GG Voodoo Wrapper to the second option. But if you were installing this as per the guide's recommendation on something like the Steam Deck, or in a fresh installation of Linux where you don't have Wine at all, this won't be an issue. However, with that said, I'm going to raise my game's graphics, I'm going to turn on anti-aliasing, and I kind of want to turn off shadow levels. These used to cause an issue in the past. I believe they may still do so. I'll experiment with that later and put it on screen whether or not you can have this on or off. I'm just going to turn mine off. I believe simple works too, but I'm just, like I said, I'm just going to keep mine off. And that should be about it. All I have to do now is pretty much hit continue and those settings are now permanently saved. I'll never have to do that again unless I decide I want to. Other than that, we just need to accept the end user's license agreement and our game should fire up right away. But yeah, that did not take long at all. As you can see, the video on the menu has been turned off as well as the intro video. As of the game itself, there's no really in-game video from what I remember, so you could play this full game from beginning to end just fine. So as you can see, I'm in a level right now and everything is working great. We got audio, we got cutscenes playing out, and the controls pretty much work flawlessly. Now this is one of those kind of tankier games, so you will have to configure the game's controls to suit your own need. So with that said, if you plan to play on something like the Steam Deck, I recommend just making your own gaming uh, profile for this game in terms of controls. I also recommend turning on stretched, that way you have the game in full screen. It does stretch the visuals out a little bit, but with an old game like this you hardly notice. But with that said, I'm going to cut now to the Steam Deck playing this game, just to show you that both my computer and my Steam Deck are indeed running this, and it's not a trick in the recording, so to say. And if you're wondering about battery life overall, what GameScope tells me is I could play this game for about 7 hours or 8 off a single charge pretty much if I tune things properly. If I don't tune anything at all, I believe it's around 6 to 7 hours. Which, to be fair, is not bad at all. But yeah guys, that's pretty much it for this video, and I'm gonna leave it off here for now. Expect me to come back to this topic in a part 2, because I want to try to fix the LAN issue within Lutris. 
because I do know land works. I've done it before through wine, and Lutris is just a front end for wine, so there's got to be a trick to get that enabled. And I also believe you can reformat the videos to another format, and because we're running this through Lutris, we could trick the game to run those video formats instead of having to utilize old DLL files to get old video formats to play. But yeah, for now I'm going to leave today's video off here. DTPK signing off. Peace. All this shit. It's, it's an okay solution, probably not the best for longevity, but hey, it works and it's working. Now once you verify that the uh, GBA card is a fake or a reproduction, I would recommend dumping the data.